Do you smell toast, I... Bodie? No, I don't. I'm good. Not right now. Not yet. Not yet. We'll, we'll let you know. Life enabling moons can probably only form around small planets, study finds. Earth's moon is large for its planet size, and many astronomers have long believed that this fact has helped make Earth a habitable world. A new study has now found that our planet was just the right size to form such a large life enabling moon. The study, by researchers from the University of Rochester in New York, found that rocky planets with a diameter more than 1.6 times that of Earth and icy planets with a diameter more than 1.3 times that of Earth likely can't create moons that would have those life-enabling effects on them. You scroll down. Oh, hold on. There we go. <laughs> Earth's moon has a radius uh, larger than a quarter of the Earth's radius. That's a much larger ratio than that of any other moon in our solar system, and its host planet, thanks to its large size compared to the planet, the moon controls the length of Earth's day and governs ocean tides. The moon also stabilizes the Earth's axis of rotation, which in turn stabilizes its mild climate, which is favorable for life. The moon, scientists believe, was born from a cataclysmic collision of a nascent Earth with a Mars-sized world known as Thea. The impact stirred up a huge amount of material, part of which turned into vapor, in the heat generated by the impact. For some time, this material circled the Earth in a disk similar to the ring system around Saturn. The material in this disk, scientists believe, gradually gave rise to smaller moonlets, which subsequently merged into into one to form one large moon. So why can't larger planets achieve the same result? The new study, based on computer modeling, found that as larger planets collide, the energy of the impact is such that all of the ejected material vaporizes rather than part of it, and that makes a difference. The large amount of vapor around the planet creates a drag which gradually slows down the moonlets as they orbit the planet, making them crash into its surface, the study finds. Our impact simulations show that terrestrial and icy planets are larger than 1.3 to 1.6, the radius of Earth, produce entirely vapor disks, which fail to form a fractionally large moon. Scientists said in the study, our model supports the moon formation models that produce vapor-poor disks and rocky and icy exoplanets whose radii are smaller than 1.6, the radius of Earth, are ideal candidates for hosting fractionally large exomoons. Mm -hmm. The findings... <laughs> <laughs> the findings might help astronomers fine-tune their search for potentially habitable planets. They simply have to focus on those that have a large moon compared to their size. By understanding moon formations, we have a better constraint on what to look for when searching for Earth-like planets. Study lead author Michaela Nakajima, an assistant professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of Rochester, said in a statement, We expect that exomoons, moons orbiting planets outside their solar system, should be everywhere, but so far we haven't confirmed any. Our constraints will be helpful for future observations. Nearly 5,000 exoplanets have been discovered since the detection of the first couple in 1992. None of these planets so far have been proven to have a moon, although scientists have found a few candidates. But Nakajima suggests that the reason for this exomoon absence might be due to the supply to the size of the planet studied. The exoplanet search has typically been focused on planets larger than Earth's six masses. Or excuse me, larger than, excuse me. The exoplanet search has typically been focused on planets larger than six Earth masses, she said. We are proposing that instead we should look at smaller planets because they are probably better candidates to host fractionally large moons. The study was published on Tuesday, February 1st. Just because a planet doesn't have a moon doesn't mean it can't support life. We just yeah. happen to be in an area where if, if we were actually further away from the sun, we would not have our moon. The sun's gravitation actually helps stabilize the moon's orbit. Yeah. That's pretty pretty crazy shit. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think moons would help because like it's like it says, it does help stabilize different different things around a planet. But I don't think a planet has to have a moon in order to, to hold life. No, I mean, you got to think of what the limitations of life are and what's actually necessary. I mean, we would just life wouldn't look like we see it now. Right. One hundred percent. And by the way, Lil, I think I do smell toast. But I think someone's cooking. Let's, we're not going to worry about that. <laughs> Damn, I want toast. I want toast now. Right? Fucking toast sandwich. Fucking get this. I got some cinnamon toast in there. Just a stroke machine. <laughs> 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 